Watch your turn! <laughs> Hey everyone, how's it going? Noxidar here, and welcome to the next reaction of Delicious in Dungeon, episode 10. Uh, you may notice something a little different. I went to go buzz my hair a few weeks ago, because it's summertime, and I wanted it to feel cooler. And much to my horror, as I buzzed off the comb over, I realized I actually don't have a hairline. <laughs> so, uh, two things promptly came to mind. One, I'm not going to cling to vanity and I'm not going to wear hats for the foreseeable future until my hair grows out. But two, over on the One Piece side of things, I've been doing multiple episode reactions. And for the upcoming episode, I had only recorded one because I'd recorded it like a couple of months ago. And I just thought, how funny would it be to have a hair reveal in the middle of a reaction? So you're like 15 minutes into this reaction and then all of a sudden it's like I have hair and then I don't have hair. And it would be like an RTX off moment. <laughs> and uh, the idea of that just sounded so fun that I ended up uh, wearing a hat for the last couple episodes of Delicious in Dungeon if you were wondering why. Um, yeah, I didn't want to give up the joke just yet. So now that it is successfully gone off, well, I assume successfully, I actually haven't uploaded that video yet to see what people say. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and just continue with this. The hair will grow back over time. It'll be fine. I'm going to have some bad hair days. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's funny because right now I don't have any. So... <laughs> It's fine. Just, you know, this is a case of uh, it is what it is. And what it is, it is. But what it's not is us getting to our reaction. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right to that. According to our trusty map, these stairs should lead right to the fifth floor near the orc settlement. Lyos pulls out a map and he calls it his trusty map and I realized that there are all these tools that are helping guide them further and deeper into the dungeon and you don't have to answer this this is just one of these questions that immediately comes to mind when I watch a show like this will they reach a point where there's no longer any guide because they've gone further than anybody else has for how long is that map trusty one of those questions that immediately comes to mind I didn't realize it was going to be like two seconds into the show though different tentacles there's no way they would leave this be i don't know it does connect to their settlement makes sense they'd want to keep people out press on for now don't get too close to the wall <laughs> Ew. these monsters like to hide their bodies inside of them lots of tentacles usually means that the walls are hollowed out those things love to set up camp in there i hate them almost as much as i hate mimics the orcs should have passed through here to get to the third floor but how'd they get through all this hmm <gasps> Something's here. Be careful. Uh, where's your sword? <laughs> what is Lyos gonna do without his sword? What's she gonna do without his staff? I don't know. He's pretty tough, though. He's pretty strong. Wait. That tentacle. I'll bet it's all tangled up in a trap. Wonder if there's any way I can make use of that. If I touch it directly, I'll be in for a world of hurt. Hey, Lyos. Huh? Why don't the tentacles seem to be hurting the giant frogs at all? I don't know. That's just how they're made. Real helpful, Mr. Monster <laughs> Good answer. Uh, the curiosity of youth. Whatever. Oh. Some mittens. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? It doesn't hurt. I can do this. Come on. Jump, jump. <laughs> Well played. You used it like gloves to protect your hands. That's really smart. Can make some cloaks or something. This here is a great idea. Gather the parts that have thin tips, set them aside, and boil the thicker parts. Take measurements, 
and begin sewing. It's ready. I love this because this kind of feels very much to what I love about like Monster Hunter. Yes, you're hunting these incredible monsters and yet you're also not allowing any part of it to go to waste. There's something you can do with it. This takes it like a step further where like not only are you making a meal out of it, but you're <laughs> you're like making some fashion and protection. It's so good. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is both not at all what I expected when I saw like on the little thumbnail preview of of gigantic frogs and yet it's exactly what I should have expected and that is a really fine line to kind of walk and uh, I still think Ryoko Kuri does such a good job with it if you wore this Marcel we think you'd look real cute it might work <laughs> perfect <laughs> So I've also been playing Lost Ark and this reminds me of one of those like just random rewards that you get from an event and it's like, I don't know, like a panda suit or something <laughs> and it just looks out of place in this like medieval epic fantasy where you're like crushing demon commanders and stuff. <laughs> so perfect. Oh my gosh. Amazing. It doesn't hurt a bit. So beautiful. I love these colors. Oh, cool. On the fifth floor. Yeah, see, it was like no time at all once they carved up those frogs. So the orcs were telling the truth then. And that means the red dragon can't be far off. Let's stay on our guard and see what else we can find here. We're fighting the dragon like this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like exactly what I just said. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Long ago, when the elves and dwarves split between east and west because of a war, oh. the dwarves hid in these lands waiting for the elves to attack. I've even heard that the dungeon continues to grow because of the descendants of those very dwarves. Interesting. Let us move on from unsubstantiated rumors. The one thing that I absolutely feel I've understated up to this point is the great and effective use of not just world building and not just uh, finding ways for characters to divulge information to build upon the world building but how we have these transitions into visual aids it's one thing to have someone like talk about the rift between elves and dwarves it's quite another to have an actual visual aid map and illustration and things like that to really kind of help reinforce i just think that's amazing here are the drawings of the magic circles. They are in the usual elvish language. According to the penmanship, it is the same author. And there are no signs of anyone else modifying them at all. There's no mistaking it. The Lord of the Dungeon, or should I say the Mad Maid, drew these magic circles. Is this individual an elf? I cannot say with certainty, but it's unlikely a tall man or dwarf cast it. I received a letter from the elves of the West. It said, the dungeon belongs to us. Relinquish it. Now take the entire island. This spell that tethers the soul to the body is still a great mystery. And once that mystery becomes unraveled, its value will far exceed any amount of gold. Wow. We should solve it before the elves do. A powerful spell such as this is bound to have a schematic. You should seek it out. After we get our hands on it, then you can agree to give them back the dungeon. Laios was his name, yes? He was quite the skilled adventurer. But I wonder just how far he will go. I tend to believe in the idea that there's not a lot of new things that can be introduced in storytelling. And however, taking familiar elements, making them your own and making them unique to you in the unique way it is kind of like a, a form of creation magic where you can take something that I don't want to say mundane, but uh, something so ordinary or, or something so familiar and then completely make it seem like such an alien and fresh, unique concept. And that is, again, something that I think uh, Ryoko Kuri does such a good job with. I find myself just amazed how I'm watching something where I feel like it's all familiar and yet at the same time, it's being doled out to me in this story in such a unique way that I'm excited. 
I'm constantly excited and amazed to just learn more. And I think that there is a level of trust that the audience has to give over to the storyteller to have that willful suspension of disbelief and to allow the storyteller to just captivate and take us on an adventure. And that is absolutely 100% what is happening here in Delicious and Dungeon. And I just can't give it enough praise. It's so satisfying. The fifth floor exiting the Golden Castle leads to the castle town. The area has expanded and distorted due to magic, but you can still sense phantoms of its former glory. A person passing by just out of sight. The sound of someone whispering. These strange feelings linger like a dream. I've missed that storyteller's voice. What a horrible smell. Must have been ransacked by nearby monsters. Charred remains. Was this the red dragon? Seems so. Looks like they all got hit by its fire breath attack. It must have just been here. Oh, wow. Laios, I think we could have won against the sleeping dragon, but can we really defeat it now? Don't forget you'll have to fight it with just three people. Just three? Don't look at me like that! <laughs> I told you that I'm not built for fighting! Dragons are covered in super tough scales, making them resistant to magic and weapons. But under its neck, there's an inverse scale that serves as its weak spot. If we strike there, we can win. About how big would you say this red dragon is exactly? How to explain? Oh, you see that there? It's about as tall as that crumbled passageway. Literally looks like the dragon bonked its head there. It probably oh, did. That makes sense. <laughs> it's quite huge. You'd have to keep it occupied while I'm charging up a strong explosion spell. One that will knock it unconscious. And after that... Someone will have to fatally wound it. Do you think you and Senshi can pull all of that off? Of course. I'm sure we can. Okay, how? Very carefully. There are lots of houses and bridges that extend between buildings. We blow one up when the dragon goes and walks under it, and the rubble should slow down its movement. We won't be able to buy much time when we're actually fighting it. It should also be tired from being so active. With the proper route, we can tire it out even more. Why'd it show up on floor five? It seems to be wandering around narrow areas that it doesn't like. Oh, hang on a sec. Didn't Amari say Senshi's pen is made out of a really cool metal? Sure, that knife isn't also made from something special. I'm starting to feel like we can do this. <laughs> like they say, if there's a will, there's a way. Right. Let's finish planning out our attack. We're gonna home alone this dragon. I can't wait. <laughs> this will be quite the task, don't you think? A good meal is most important. He's got the right idea. Last time they got caught on an empty stomach. Of an empty stomach. Yep. Shave down some bread with a grater. Work in the breadcrumbs. Then heat some olive oil and fry. It's ready. Wow. <laughs> Cutlets to conquer the red dragon. What's wrong, Marcel? Knowing these monster meals will come to an end soon just got me a little emotional. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? Everyone? I want to say something. Oh, here we go. I don't think I would have been able to make it this far on my own. We were strangers, but you were still kind to us. Your food not only filled our stomachs, but my heart as well. Mm. If you weren't with us, we would have lost days taking the long way down. I'm sorry for putting you through everything. When you said you'd come with us, I was really happy. Uh, of of course. course. You're so cringe. Sorry. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing they finished their meal then. All right. Let's go. Oh man. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like that episode actually went by really quick. Man, we are in for a treat. It was really good hearing the narrator's voice again, kind of building up our scenario or situation. They're still like fighting these perilous fights, encountering these dangerous situations. And yet, they're having the most exquisite culinary adventure along the way. And that's where I say, like, you take these familiar elements of storytelling, but you give it your unique flair. And the audience is willing to go along with it. And that angle can just twist just enough to make everything feel fresh and new and like you're experiencing something again for the first time and that's really 
a lot of the a lot of how I feel going through these episodes. Now we're closing in on the halfway point, and I already feel like we've had like a full <laughs> several full adventures already. But it seems like now the pieces are starting to move in such a way that the understanding is being shaped from the whole world, or, or at least this, you know, this land. Um, not just the dungeon and the level that we find ourselves, but how everything is interconnected. And I guess going back and talking about using the frog skin, and uh, so, like, they're they're finding utility with it, and at the same time finding a meal with it and yeah i know it it did it reminded me a lot of like monster hunter but at the same time i love how it just ties back to the first episode and talking about the ecosystem structure within the dungeon and to always have these things reinforced and this was a great episode to just reinforce everything from world building to uh, previously brought up plot points to even just previously brought up ideas of you know the the actual foundation and structure of the story and the motivations for it everything about this episode was so amazing and i can't wait until we fight the red dragon that's coming up in our next episode i'll see you then this is noxidar out i'll see you oh no i used my other hand so i gotta reach Try to stop the recording like this.